بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, our presentation today uh, on the case that I have put on the uh, on the group of the women imaging study group uh, this uh, was the case presented uh, the case was female patient 13 years old presented with lower abdominal pain lower abdominal swelling and then recently she got urinary retention and then urgent plain CT was done here is the CT showing bilateral hydronephrosis uh, mostly due to the retention of blood below and then on searching the cause you will find here that there is a cystic pelvic mass I named it incarcerated in the pelvis uh, here is the urinary bladder collapsed anteriorly and here this, this is the urinary bladder and then it shows a fullest catheter inside here is the uterus of this young girl it's still small uterus this is the uterus then we have here this adenixal cystic lesion show this bone like hypodense fat attenuating structures and there is also calcification seen here this is the fat balls floating within this cystic lesion and this is a large bulky calcification seen in the cyst wall and here is the ultrasound second look ultrasound on the case we'll see, we see here the multiple poles present and the dot dash appearance we will say all the criteria of the mature cystic teratoma later on this is the dot dash appearance and on color doubler they are completely avascular which is very important sign also in MRI this is sagittal T2 and this is sagittal T1 showing the fat poles here also they are slightly bright in T1 and of iso intense signal on T2 uh, it is um, overlapped by the uh, by the brightness of the cystic component the calcification of course in the MRI will not be detected except for this hypo intense but it is seen is seen here um, as we see it retrograde from the CT and this is the fat poles on T1 and on fat suppression these fat balls are suppressed on the fat suppression and here is MRU showing the main complaint of the patient was due to that that this cystic lesion was incarcerated in the pelvis causing obstruction of the urinary bladder and subsequently there is marked hydroureter and hydronephrosis uh, here is the calcification and this is the cyst how it is uh, this is a another case from the literature showing fat balls uh, within a lesion so this is a mature cystic teratoma we will make our topic today about the mature cystic teratoma or the germ cell tumors. The ovarian teratomas are the most common germ cell neoplasm. It comprises a number of histological types of tumors, all of which contain mature or immature tissue of germ cell origin. The most common of these tumors is the mature cystic teratoma. Uh, formally, we called it dermite cyst, but better to say that it is mature cystic teratoma because it is composed of more than one component. Typically, it contains mature tissues of ectoderm, skin, or brain. Uh, we will say that some of them will be neuroectodermal tissue, ectoderm, skin, or brain, mesoderm, muscle, and fat, and endoderm, mucinous, or ciliated epithelium. Mature cystic teratoma is a benign tumor commonly seen in the reproductive age group from 16 to 55 years, usually the presentation accidentally. Sometimes when you do pelvic ultrasound for a female, you accidentally discover that she has a teratoma, but sometimes she came with complaint, abdominal and back pain, mass presenting by mass, 
abnormal uterine bleeding because sometimes they are secreting hormones and bladder and GIT symptoms. If it is a very large teratoma in the abdomen, it may cause bladder and GIT symptoms. Uh, of course, if there is complaint from this teratoma, it must be removed by surgical remover. First, <coughs> it can be accidentally discovered on conventional radiography. This is plain X-ray showing calcification in the wall of this cyst and it was like appearance inside. And this is the typical appearance of mature cystic teratoma on plain film. And usually, if the patient presenting by abdominal pain or uh, retention as, as our case, the f first they will do plain film to exclude that it is urinary stone, for example. So this is the plain film. Uh, the role of CT, CT is very important for characterization of the presence of fat teeth and the calcification. So CT is one of the diagnostic um, modalities in this entity. Uh, here we have a complex adenixal lesion, left adenixal region. You can see here the different components. You can see fat component. Even if we don't measure the Hounsfield units, it is similar to the fat of the pelvis. And here there is a fluid part, and the fluid part is similar to the urinary bladder. And there is a tooth here. So we can characterize fat, tooth, or calcification. So when, if you suspect mature cystic teratoma, you can do CT. No, no need to do MRI, you can do CT. Uh, if there is no enhancing components, there is no abnormality uh, surrounding. This is another case also of, of, of mature cystic teratoma. It is bilocular here, it contains fat contents, and there is a tooth here also. So this is another case of a typical mature cystic teratoma on CT. Uh, in mature cystic teratoma, they account for 10 to 20 percent of all ovarian neoplastic lesions, and they have a peak incidence from 20 to 40 years. Mature cystic teratomas are usually benign, but in rare cases, in 0.1 to 0.2 percent, they may undergo malignant transformation, and we will see in the later slides. Uh, these tumors are usually slow growing, and most are unilateral, but may be bilateral in 10% of cases, but usually I see more than this uh, ratio uh, in bilaterality. A spectrum of sonographic appearance, we have diffusely or partially echogenic mass with posterior sound attenuation, an echogenic mass, and, and you know, take, this is the echogenicity of fat. This hyper echogenicity, this is echogenicity of fat with posterior sound attenuation owing to spacious material here within the cyst. We can also see here an echogenic interface at the edge of the mass. Here, there is echogenic interface, and this is what we call the tip of iceberg sign, where we have floating fat, and then we have shadow uh, posterior to it. So, so this is a tip of iceberg sign. We can see also mural hyperechoic repetinistic nodule, or we can see calcific or dental tooth component. You have a tooth here. Although the rest of the cyst is completely cystic with no fat content seen. So you can find a tooth. Multiple seen echogenic bands of the hair dot dash appearance we will see in later case how, how we can see this dot dash appearance of the multiple as we see the hair of the fetus on ultrasound. On color doubler there must be no internal vascularity no internal vascularity to exclude malignant change. This is also fat fluid level. We have here fluid level, fat fluid level. Uh, this is the, recept the reverse of endometrioma. In the, in the teratoma, you find that the fat in the upper part of the cyst floating in the upper part of the cyst, while the hypo echoic fluid in the lower part of the cyst, and so also an MRI, and this is the, in, in contrast to the endometrioma. The endometrioma, usually the echogenic component is lower down, and the plasma or the serum is above, so it is the reciprocal of this. Uh, you can find also echogenic focus with predominantly cystic component, uh, tip of iceberg sign we have said. This is a small teratoma in the ovary, a small mature cystic teratoma, and when it is completely fatty, sometimes we could not see it is teratoma or lipoma uh, of the ovary. This is an intra-ovarian 
legion have the same fat density, but it is so small, uh, so well defined, and within the parenchyma of the ovary, but the ovarian lipoma is much rarer than the, uh, my, uh, than the dermoises. You can find hair or fat fluid level as we see in the previous slide. This is a case of teratoma also. This is, here we can see thick wall of the teratoma, echogenic also, and there is echogenic floating uh, parts here. Many echogenic floating parts. The, the rest of the cyst show fine echos, and then we must put Doppler. When you put Doppler, you found that this thick echogenic wall and this uh, echogenic particles inside are not vascular on color Doppler, completely not vascular on color Doppler, and take care of bilaterality. This is one on the left side, this is the uterus, and this is another one on the right side. This is tip of iceberg sign, and that we uh, sometimes call ghost shadow. We have seen it as ghost shadow, ghost shadow. Sometimes this ghost shadow may be misleading for a distended colon with, um, um, with, with, with contents inside. How to be sure that it is not a distended colon? It's a ghost shadow of a teratoma. We have what we say positive sonography uh, sign, sonography sign positive. That when you make the patient prepare herself and come again, you will find the same features present. So this is a mature cystic teratoma. Or otherwise, you can take CT cut to be sure that it is teratoma. Another case, we have here an echogenic shape. You see here the hyperechoic fat. This is the hyperechoic appearance of fat. So we have a cystic multilocular lesion with hyperechoic fat component. And this hyperechoic fat component is not vascular on color Doppler. Here also, it is not vascular on color Doppler. So this is a case of mature cystic teratoma. And this is our first case. This is also the balls of mature cystic teratoma. And this is the dot dash appearance that we say. This is the dot dash appearance. Like the hair of the fetus, as I told you. I told you. Yeah, but this is the dot dash appearance, and here on color Doppler, there is no vascularity at all inside. But look, in this case, we have hyper uh, hyper echoic uh, lesion here, not vascular on color Doppler, thick wall, dot dash appearance. But unfortunately, we have a part that is highly vascular here, and we thought of malignant transformation. Uh, we will say what what type of malignant transformation occur in the mature cystic teratoma. Another case, here this is a vascular part within which being suspicious for, uh, it was a pregnant female and she has this adenixal mass and this appearance is suspicious for a vascular mass within, uh, uh, meaning that there may be malignant transformation. This is a long ago scoring system we used to uh, being unilateral, we gave it score two serial sonography positive. What I say to you that you prepare the patient and let her come back. You have the same appearance. Then this is serial sonography positive. Uh, thick walls, thin echogenic bands like echos, echogenic tubercles within the ovary, and there is no vascularity on color dog. Uh, the MRI in mature cystic teratoma will have the typical appearance. Hyper intense in T1, hi, hi, hyper intense in T2, and hypo intense on fat suppression. And this is the case uh, you have seen on ultrasound uh, of the tooth present inside. This is the crown of the tooth. And here, although it, on the ultrasound it was completely anechoic, but it is oil. It's still fat component as it is bright in T1, bright, slightly bright on T2, and completely suppressed on fat suppression. Here is another case of typical teratoma. We have here the fat component. It is bright on T1 and completely suppressed on fat suppression. So this is a case of bilateral mature cystic teratoma. This is another case here. This is a sagittal T2. We, we see here a cystic lesion that is bright on T2. And we see here that it is of low signals, 
here it is uh, bright on T1 and suppressed on fat suppression. But here the density is not so high as we see in the first case. And on CT also it is hypodense of fat density present in that region. So this is uh, an, another case of mature cystic teratoma. This is another case of mature cystic teratoma showing fat fluid level. As we see here, this is a fat uh, fluid level uh, with suppression on post um, suppression on fat uh, suppression. Suppressed on fat suppression. Uh, but uh, not all the case um, uh, uh, always I used to say to them that if, if the conditions are black and white it will be so light but it is not black and white there is a spectrum of grayness so we have a typical appearance in mature cystic teratoma a minor percent of mature cystic teratomas have only small amount of fat or no visible fat on imaging studies in one series 15% uh, this is from the literature. 15% of the mature cystic teratoma did not show fatty tissue in the, in the uh, cystic cavity. Approximately half had only a small fat component in the wall or in the Lucatinsky nodule. Uh, and in the remainder of cases, sometimes we could not identify fatty component at all. Uh, like this case, a minor percent have a small amount of fat. Here, if you see this case, we have only this fatty globule floating in the upper part of the cyst. It is a multilocular cyst. It is uh, in uh, slightly hyperintense on um, T2 uh, and isointense also in T1. So it's not typical fat. The only fatty part is this globule floating and it is suppressed on fat suppression. So it is bright on T1 here and it is suppressed on fat suppression, so it is the only fat component present in this case. This is another case. We have here a cystic lesion, uh, left adenixin. We could not say ovarian here at all because there is no peak sign could be elicited, but it is uh, left adenixin. Uh, proved to be left ovarian after that, but here we have a cystic with Two, يعني, like the fat balls we see before, but these fat balls are slightly hyper intense, slightly hyper intense, and they are suppressed on fat suppression. So we suspect that it is teratoma, but not the typical appearance, not even for the, the, la the, the large amount of floating balls as we see in the first case. And this is the, um, the balls that is bright on T1. They appear here on ultrasound with posterior shadowing. Likely they are not fat. They are more uh, globules of sepum and, and, uh, and, uh, and hair. Uh, and the rest of the cysts on ultrasound appear echogenic and no vascularity at all on color doppler. So this is also a case of teratoma. This is another case, just fatty thick wall. In this case, th this is bilateral teratoma also. But here this one show a fat pole inside that is suppressed on fat suppression and on the other side, on the left side, we have only thickened bright wall on T1 that is also suppressed on fat suppression so here the only sign is just thickened fatty wall uh, here is another case this is fluid level, fat fluid level uh, the brightness is not so high also but here there is fat fluid level seen, and this is the fat fluid level seen on ultrasound in the same case. Uh, we have complication of the ovarian teratoma. Complications of ovarian teratoma are many. The most, the most common is torsion. And we have seen multiple cases with torsion uh, on top of ovarian teratoma. So take care on the presence of abdominal pain that it may be torsion overlying an ovarian teratoma. In the first torsion, this occurs in 16% of ovarian teratomas. Rupture is in 1 to 4% of teratomas. Malignant transformation in 1 to 2%. And when there is malignant transformation, usually the carcinoma is a squamous. 
squamous cell carcinoma. Infection may occur, but very, very rare, and autoimmune hemolytic anemia uh, was um, uh, considered in, in, in only less than 1% of cases. Uh, maybe due to associated bleeding, I don't know the... the uh, here, this is torsion with iteratoma. This case presented to us with acute pelvic pain, uh, and CT was done, and here this is a teratoma with fat density and uh, calcification in the rickettsia skin nodule. But here, there is associated enlarged ovary with soft tissue component, and um, being, she, I think she, she was not uh, injected contrast, so we have to do second look ultrasound. This is the teratoma by ultrasound. This is again the dot dash appearance. Uh, of the mature cystic teratoma and the surrounding ovary which appear hypoechoic which is uh, characteristic for uh, the torsion and here also on there is divide of vascularity and uh, preferably located follicles in the rest of the ovary so this is torsion on top of mature cystic teratoma the second uh, complication is rupture I didn't confront it by a case of rupture before but this is from the literature um, this is ruptured uh, left ovarian cyst. Note here there is a break in the wall and there is fat everywhere. There is fat here, there is areas of fat attenuation. Floating fat is seen here in the, and, uh, in the splenic hilum and, uh, and here in the porta hepatis and there is a fat globule here also. So this is a case of ruptured left mature cystic teratoma with multiple fat globules present all through. Uh, this is another case of rupture. How to, 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 to see that there is rupture of this teratoma? If you find this continuity of the wall, presence of ascites, distorted or flattened shape of the tumor, if you have acute or chronic peritonitis, sometimes you find widespread of these uh, fatty globules, if you have focal or omental infiltration, if you have inflammatory masses in the omentum and bowels, that sometimes it may mimic peritoneal carcinomatosis and the tuberculous peritonitis. And then came the malignant transformation. The malignant transformation is the presence of an enhancing solid part. And this enhancing solid part usually have an obtuse angle with the wall of the cyst. And this solid part, hatta even it is replacing the calcification uh, present in the rocatiniski nodule. Uh, this is a case from uh, our department here. This is a case of uh, squamous cell carcinoma complicating mature cystic teratoma. And you see here the fat fluid level and the floating bones of the hair and sepum within. And then came here this mass. And this mass have an obtuse angle with the wall of the cyst. And when you do functional MRI, it has malignant criteria. There is type 3 curve wash out. And here is the mass. So this is squamous cell uh, carcinoma on top of immature teratoma. Uh, immature teratoma on, from the start. Immature teratoma is from the start and not, it, is, uh, it is not a complication of mature cystic teratoma. In immature teratoma, it represents 1% of all teratomas. So thank God it is low percent and contain immature tissue from all germ cell layers. The tumor strikes during the first two decades of life. Benign mature teratomas must be differentiated from malignant or immature teratoma, which have prominent solid component and may demonstrate internal necrosis and hemorrhage. Uh, mature cystic teratoma have special characteristics. Uh, they have malignant behavior, of course, usually affect the young age, usually affect the young age, and there is presence of immature or embryonic tissue. Uh, regarding the ultrasound appearance, you found heterogeneous partially solid lesion with scattered calcification and fossil fat. The characteristic that they have a small fossil fat scattered within the lesion. And CT and MRI, you will find an irregular solid component containing a coarse calcification with small fossil fat scattered within, not large amount of fat as in cases of mature cystic teratoma. And sometimes there is hemorrhage present. Uh, this is a case of mature cystic teratoma. Note here the fat globules, very fine, very fine fat globules within, but there is coarse calcifications and there is soft tissue components uh, within the lesion. 
in a large complex mass with cystic and solid components, scattered calcification, in contrast to the calcification of teratomas, which is only localized to the mural nodule, as we have seen in the previous cases. Small fossil fat is also seen in immature teratoma, and these tumors usually more in bilaterality more in these cases, and they may grow rapidly. Another case of immature teratoma, but with MRI. Here in the MRI, you, you see here the fatty, the scattered fatty component, only very small amounts of fat, thickened septi, solid parts, solid parts here, and the thick septi. There is a solid parts here, and thick septi. So this is the appearance of mature cystic teratoma. So I think CT is more characteristic uh, in the imaging of immature teratoma rather than the MRI. And this is a case also by ultrasound showing the uh, ecogenic uh, calcific, scattered ecogenic calcification and the fat component present. And this is the uh, how to differentiate. This is the immature teratoma with the scattered fat globules and uh, scattered calcification seen. But here in the mature cystic teratoma, we have a large calcification related to the recutaneous nodule and there is a large amount of fat filling most of the cyst. This is bilateral also here. Uh, this is another case by MRI of mature, immature teratoma. We have a very, very rare entities, but we must um, be aware of them because may sometimes you can confront it by uh, cases like that. Monodermal teratomas composed predominantly or solely of one tissue only. The main types of monodermal teratomas are the stroma ovarii, the ovarian carcinoma tumor, and the tumors with neural differentiation. So stroma ovarii represent 3% of all mature teratomas. They are composed predominantly of mature thyroid tissue that demonstrate a sinai filled with thyroid colloid. So sometimes they, they appear dense on CT. Thyrotoxicosis can be seen as the complication of these cases, and this is the appearance of the stroma ovary. Complex lesion present in the uh, right ovary. Here also a case of stroma ovary, dense calcifications. There is no typical fat appearance, but here more dense appearance of the thyroid tissue with colloid inside. There is also carcinoid tumor, which is uncommon. It occurs in the postmenopausal women, and most of these tumors have relatively benign clinical course. Carcinoid syndrome is uncommon. We have also neural tumors, like ependymoma-like tumor, and primitive neuroectodermal tumors give a more aggressive. This, uh, the, the, the monodermal teratomas. This is carcinoid tumor. And we have also the collision tumor, that sometimes the mature cystic teratoma is associated with other different pathology in the ovary. I have this case, I think it's also on the group. This is a case of bilateral disc germinoma and accidentally discovered teratoma on top. Here, this is the disc germinoma, this is the solid ovarian mass, and beside it, from the rest of the ovary arise uh, another uh, pathology, which is the mature cystic teratoma, this is called the collision tumor. And this is another case. We also thought that it is a mature cystic teratoma on top of mucinous cyst adenoma because it is a large component, only small fat globule here, and calcification in the basal part of the cyst, uh, but the pathology was mature cystic teratoma. Um, I use more with that it is mature cystic teratoma on top of mucinous cyst adenoma. Thank you for listening, and I hope it will be informative lecture.